I'm trying to bring the, the sharing that we have had for the couple of months to a close. And we have been talking about or thinking about a few questions from the life of, of, of uh, Joseph. And like uh, Sheila has said, she wants to stand in and save the family like Joseph did. And the family was rescued from hunger and famine. And I know God is able to do it. Amen. God is able to do it. That concern that God has given to Sheila, that concern that uh, Dave has, God is able to give the protection that you have, never, you have never seen before. And then one day, you can remember this day and give honor to the Lord. We mentioned Genesis 50 verse 20 when we started sharing about the life of Joseph. And now we want to conclude, and I want to read verse 19 and 20 of Genesis 50. And Joseph said to them, don't be afraid, am I in the place of God? See, so, okay. You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done. That is, the saving of many lives. Remember the question that we have been asking ourselves, there are many, and one of it is, does everything that happens work for good? That's the question that we ask. Does everything that happens to us, does it work for good? Because every time something evil happens, we ask those questions. We ask, God, for this stray bullet to hit a young man in his 20s, in uh, Mweki, when he was not in the group, is that, does that work for good? When some teachers are isolated just because they are Christians and non Muslims in this country, and they are shot dead, or a bus is stopped, and everybody who does not have a buoy buoy, a woman is killed, and men that have names are also killed. Then we ask, Is that God? Can that work together for good? Those are the questions that we've been asking. When things happen to good people, the question that we have been asking is, Why does this happen to me? Why is it happening to me now? Those are the questions that we ask. Today's question that we are asking ourselves is, can we trust God with all the details of our life? Can we trust God with the details? Can you trust God with the details of your life? Can you? Is it possible that all the details of your life you can trust God with? Because that will be key in, in our lives. Trusting God with all our details. Because when things happen, you ask yourself, why me? Why now? Why this? Those are questions that we ask, and those questions are valid, but sometimes we don't have an answer when we need it. The series that I've been go going through the last couple of months, we've been asking ourselves various questions. The first one we ask is, do you know why you were born? Because if you know why you're born, then you'll not struggle a lot. You'll keep on pursuing the purpose of which God has given you. But if you don't, anything can, can frustrate you, including when a young man boots you as a woman, a girl, or when a young girl boots you out uh, as, as a guy. You can think the world is over. Which world is over? Kaka box too? Io too? You know? But if you know your purpose, you have a candle and life continues because the life that God has for you is bigger. We also ask ourselves, do you know who you are. Because when you know who you are, nobody will give you an identity. You know who you are. You will stand by that and say, I'm not trying to pretend to be anything that I'm not. I know who I am. Then we look for this other question, are you willing to wait for God? Because some of us are in a hurry. We want to go before God. So we ask ourselves, and through Joseph, are you willing to wait for God? Then we ask, how big is your God? How big is our God? Because when we ask ourselves how big is our God and we know how big he is, then there are a few things that we can handle because our God is big. Because our God is big. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Our God is big. He has no problem with ODM or whatever Jubilee. Actually, he even is wondering, what are we talking about? When we talk about Brit 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 Building bridges and breaking others. Because that is human being. We build this, we break others. 
And that's why the church had to say the constitution was evil, but they say the constitution is good. They say they are going to change. Now they are not changing what we said is evil. They are trying to build bridges. What are the bridges they are building? They are building bridges to help themselves and breaking others. When they finish the BBI 1, they might even introduce another BBI 2. But we, you see, it is good for us to know that God is so big than BBI. So that we can trust him. He is bigger. How big is your God? And then we also said, are you willing to face your past? Some of us are captives of our past. Ukinuka kidogo, your past hits you. Kijijienu, karatega akurino. So what? You wake up and let that life continues. Kwani? Kuzariwa hiyo kijiji. What is wrong with being born in that village? Don't allow it to hurt you. Atu ulipata sijui di ama ukapata. You know, atu ukapata, ukupata kitu. Ukupata kitu. Ulipata hii, ukupata kitu. You know. Now, look at your neighbor. Please. Let me ask. I'm not going to ask Catherine and... Uh, and because these two were in the same university. So they know. But these two were not in the same university. Look at her in the face. Tell me what she got in her O level. <laughs> you can't tell. The guy you have seated with, you don't know. So if they told you what they got, Sini Ushudao. But you see, it is not written on their face. There are some of us that did not see the university when the doors was there because the doors was closed. But you know what? God is awesome. When I face my past, I tell my past, you cannot hinder me. You cannot stop me. You cannot become a breeze. You cannot be a, a stumbling block. I will still get... You see, so what? Oh, I like some of you single mothers that are here. You are so proud. At, I am so and so a single mother. You know, some of us are afraid. If the guy left, let him go. Kwanza nitakaa kabisa vizuri. Kwani kila mtu smart yote lazima awe na bwana. Face your past. Face it. Deal with it. It has happened so what? My spouse has died so what? My child has gone so what? Hit the ground running. Do, do you want to be set free? Because you see, those are questions we ask. Do you want to be set free? Because when you want to be set free, you will go for it regardless of who is around. You want freedom? Go for it. Hallelujah. Then we ask ourselves, are you satisfied with God? Does God become everything to you? You know, are you satisfied with God? Yani, mungu tosha. Lastly, we said, utakumbukuoje. What will they remember you for? What will you, and then today we are saying, can you trust God with all the details of your life? Trusting God with all the details of our life. Joseph's story actually tells us that Romans 8.28 is true. For we know that all things work together for good to those who love God. To those who are called according to his purpose. To those ones then everything works together for good. Why? Because there is no devil or demons that can change the plan of God. And you know, I told you some of you have to be deported so that God can have his own purpose. But then the problem is that when you get deported, you want to lie to everybody. Ati, unajua, mimi si kupenda America, nimerudi home. Hit the road running, be truthful. Face your past. Kwa ni kurudishu wa kwenu kuna makosa gani? When I landed myself, when I was deported myself, I landed smiling. Home is home. But when I was in the air, I was wondering, what will I tell people? Until somebody seated next to me was sent by God, so that he can ask me, why am I so sad? And then when I told him, he said, oh no, get back. 
God has good plans for you. He was a missionary coming to Africa. God has wonderful plans for you. And I tell you, now I can look back and say, this is that one. God knew it. And some of you need to go back and see, if this did not happen, where could you be? Friday, we wanted to get to a plane to come to Nairobi. Nice and take to Nizuri San. Zina Kuamaga, Zina Diriago. So, we arrived in the airport in Kisumu at, at, at five because somebody was dropping us on his way to Kericho. So, we were there two hours, almost three hours before the time of departure, which is close to eight. At around 7.30, they came and smiled at us, says the ladies and gentlemen, our flight has been delayed for one hour. And then they left. So that meant 9.10. At 9.10, they came and told us, the plane has landed, but it has a problem. <laughs> the landing gear has a problem. At that point, one of the Asians that was with us was so mad. No, you have to take us. Now I was wondering. Uambiwe ndege ni mbaya. Where are you? Are you serious? You know, some people are not serious. Mimi, hiyo fitu sitaki. Sitaki, iende. So, at around 11, tunatafuta mahali pakwenda kulala. Tukalala. And we are asking ourselves, mungu wa tusaidie tujue tunafudichu wa nini. What is God doing? You know, I know, I know my testimony would be so good if I told you. Hiyo ndege, nilikata kuigia, ikaanguka rogonot. Shindwe. Sote tuliokoka. That's a testimony. God saved us from some problems. All of us. Watch a testimony. Hizo zigini ya doa mtanasa. Unajua niliomba na mungu walikuwa menionesha mutaenda kukufia huko. Uyo siyo mungu. Mungu wa kuokoa ndiye mungu. He, is, he loves us. The following day we were there seven. Tuliamuka four, thirty-five, seven. Tuko palata breakfast atu kukula. Then they come and smile at us. Ladies and gentlemen, it has delayed again. <laughs> we were to go at seven something. It has delayed again. But it is coming. Finally, we left those ones. We bought another ticket. Kwa sababu hiyo ndege haikuja hata wakati tumetoka Kisumo. Five minutes to eleven. Haikuja. Now to make things very interesting. Ndege biri zilikuwa hapo la, the previous night. Siwabini kambudi gani musianza kusema hizo dizwazi ya dagi. Ya kwanza watu walikuwa karibu wa ingie. Wanaambiwa you'll be <laughs> at it has come now you'll be entering. Alafu wakambiwa no the plane that you saw land hit a bird. Tuliwacha hapo. Na yetu landing gear. Tuliwacha hapo. What I'm saying is that you hit the road running. I mean, atitukai kisumo, tuwanze kulament, ama tuseme tumenoki. Tutaenda Nairobi migu. Tumenoki. Tutaingia gari ingine hapo. Basi ingine. Si tutakuja usiku, tutafika hapa asubui. Tutafika hapa labda. You know the thing is, sometimes when you cannot do nothing, and you know you have gotten to the limit. Leave it to God. When you have done your best, leave it to God. Let God handle the rest. Tukafika huku saasaba na nadakeka katha. Sasa unajua katika mwoyo wa binadamu ni kusama. Si taenda na hiyo ndege tena. Gani? Ni gani utaenda na hiyo? Hiyo igine utaenda na hiyo. Si itakuwa na kasoro pia. Kwa hivyo kama unasafiri, muachie mungu. Kwa za mungu ni muaminifu. Can we trust God with the details of our life? All things work together for good. And you know, the whole of the book of Genesis, looking at the life of Joseph, what we have been looking at is what I want to explain to you now. Because if you miss it, you'll miss the whole story of Joseph. And that is the providence of God. Providence of God. What is providence of God? And we want to define it a little. Because the whole of the story of Joseph that we have talked about is trying to to divine what providence is all about. The English, in the English word, providence has two parts. It's pro and video. When you put together, literally meaning to see before. Though 
the word itself is not found in the most modern translation of the Bible, the concept is subtly biblical. It refers to God's gracious oversight over the universe. Yes. Yani hakuna anajua kila kitu. Amen. Anajua kila kitu. Hakuta kitu kimefichika kwake. In other words, for us to understand providence, we have to have these other four or five things that are directly the providence of God. For you to understand providence. Number one, he upholds all things. He governs all things. He directs everything to its appointed end. He does this all the time in every circumstance. And finally, he does it for his own glory. Now, providence is simply getting to that level. You say, oh God, you uphold it. It happened, but you are still in control. You are governing it. All the events. It's like saying God is directing the movements. He does this all the time in every circumstance of my life and your life. God does not roll a dice. Mungu had to be karata. Maisha yetu si ya karata. You know, it's not karata. He, 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 he doesn't play karata with our lives. Ati ukiweka hapa, ati ukiishi hivi, nitafanya, apana, hachezi karata. He, he is in it all through. And in that we learn about three things about providence, which I think is important for us. We learn about providence, in that doctrine of providence, we learn several important truths, but there are three truths that I think are important for us. Well, number one, that first we learn that God cares about the tiniest details of life. Hakuna kitu kidogo kwake. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Hakuna kitu kidogo kwake. Nisaidia, saidia jirani yako hapo mnakana. Umambi hakuna kitu mungu hajali. Hata hicho kidogo. He is so concerned about whether I woke up, whether I had tea in the morning, whether I had breakfast in the morning. He is so mindful about whether I slept well. He is so mindful. He, there is nothing small in God. And I bless him for that. Nothing escapes the notice for he is concerned about the small as well as the big. He is so concerned, you know. Inzi walifika tharaka, wameenda kitui, na wikia wameingia mashako, zdiyo wanasema leo. Lakini kuna ushuda niripewa, nao nikaona ushuda mzuri ni kuambie. Tukua meru, kinoru stadium, tuliomba mungu, arudishe inzi, kule zimetoka. Ni inzi? Nzige. Kumbe mulikuwa mekubali ni inzi, eh? Ni nzige. Nzige zirudi kule zimetoka. Tuka ita mungu, alete upepo, alio leta misri. Ukachukua nzige, ukazipereka pori na nzige na inzi zote. So this brother said, nzige zirifika meru, watu wa meru, zirifika. Lakini zika ingiria miraa. Sasa hii ni ushuhude ya bishop moja wetu huko. Zika ingiria meraa. Zilipo kura meraa, siju kama ni kunoki, zilinoki. Zika kataa kura vitu zigine, zika enda kutafuta meraa igine huko tharaka. Shindwe. Uwe ni ushuhuda wake. Kwa hivyo nasema kwao, kuna vitu nyingi ya ziku liwa, lakini zilipiga cover round. Zika piga kona, zika ikpitia kitui, zika kuja machako. Na hii bishop wetu wa muranga na hituwa kanyeru, jana. Tukiwa, tukiwa kisumu, alipigua kambiwa nzige wa mevamia shamba yako. Sasa bisho. Kwa hivyo, akija, Friday, alikuwa akimbie kwa shamba jana. Sasa alinipigia akiwa kwa shamba, kanambia, bisho, haziku kula, ziri onja onja, zikaenda, hata sijui ziri enda wapi. God is concerned with the little details. Ati mungu, hao nzige, ni wa... <laughs> God is concerned about those zige. Ata zile zinakura maisha yako, ziwe ndogo. God is concerned about it. And we can tell him, God, handle the grasshoppers that have come into my life. He knows when a sparrow falls. He knows the hairs on your head. He knows everything. Secondly, he uses everything and he wastes nothing. Kwa mungu, hakuna kupoteza. He doesn't waste. He 
uses everything, every detail he uses. But he does not waste nothing. That is our God. These include events that seem to us to be senseless. Tragedies that happen to us. He uses them. In other words, I myself, my story, the way I am today, it's a whole total of myself. Ile shule nilienda. Unajua hata ile shirt mimi ukwambia. Ile tuloka tukununua moja ambayo inakuwa 3 in 1. Hata hiyo. That's all my story. God, I can look back and say, God here, God here, God here, God here. God everywhere. That's God. He doesn't waste anything. Ukapigwa joka, anajua, ulichapwa. We mono, ukawa monorized, anajua. Kama ulipiga wegine, anajua ulipiga. And, and it is all there. He doesn't lose anything. Thirdly, God's ultimate purpose is to shape his children into the image of Christ. That's what he wants to do. So whatever happens, he wants to shape us. He wants to bring us closer to the image of Christ. Remember, as we talked about the life of Joseph, there are so many things that we said. We were trying to tell you, Acts 17, 28, that in him we live, we move, and we have our being. Everything is God. We were trying to tell you, I was trying to tell you, Colossians 1, 17, in him all things hold together. God holds everything. I've been trying to tell you Hebrews 1, 3. He upholds the universe by the word of his power. Everything in the universe, it's in his hands. I've been trying to tell you Proverbs 16, 9, that the heart of man can plan for his way, but the Lord establishes his steps. I've been trying to tell you that Psalms 115, verse 3, our God is in heaven, but he does what he pleases. So my life in him, that is what providence is all about. He, he is in everywhere, in every situation, in every circumstance. So providence, if you miss everything that I'm saying, providence then is the invisible hand of God in all situations. Providence. What, what we are trying to say about providence is this. That there are four other things that can help you know the providence of God because of the providence of God. We talked about the sovereignty of God. God is in charge of how everything turns out. BBI, whatever it is. Whether Ruto, whether what. Just the other day, uh, now Nyoro is the governor for Kiambu. See? See? What you are Kiambu? Urajua wengine muko Kiambu na mjui. Watu wa Kiambu mbinyi muko Kiambu. MP wenu, anaitu wa Jomo. Nini watu ya Kiambu. But it doesn't, God knows. He, there are things that you and I don't know. Whether you, then number two, predestination. God is the one who is in control. In other words, he is in charge of how everything turns out. He is. After BBI, he knows. He knows it. About the providence of God, we also find wisdom. Which is, he makes no mistake. God does not make mistake. You know, we struggle by thinking God makes mistake, but he doesn't. And then finally, the providence of God, we are talking about his goodness. He has the best interest at heart for you. Oh, yes. So when you are thinking of providence, think of that invisible hands of God. And this takes us to point number two after the definition of providence because we can see the illustration of providence in the life of Joseph. Joseph is in so innocent. His father favors him and becomes. They want to kill him. Then one day his brothers want to kill him, but the Midianites come. So he is sold out. So one day Potiphar comes, he buys him, promotes him, and then his wife wants to sleep with him, but he's put in jail. In jail, he becomes friend of the jailer. He becomes so good. And then the baker and the cup bearer come. And they dream. He interprets. Then he gets into Pharaoh. And Pharaoh, he interprets his dream because Pharaoh also has a dream. In other words, what Joseph is trying to tell us 
in terms of the providence of God. It's simply this, that Joseph saw God in everything. God in everything. Hata hizo nzige zimekuja, kuna kitu. Dio zitarudi. Tumebiambia ziende. Lakini even that we can see God. Is there something that God is trying to tell us? Is there something that God is trying to tell us? Is there something God... So, Joseph, why do we say so? We say this because of what Joseph tells his brother. Verse 19 and 20, he tells them, Don't fear, for... Am I in the place of God? As for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant for good, to bring it about that many people should be kept alive as they are today. You meant evil, he tells them. He doesn't sugarcoat it. You meant evil. You wanted me to die. You wanted, you wanted me to be forgotten in the face of the earth. That's what you wanted. But God, in other words, there are people who meant evil for you, but God. There are people who plan some things who not work for you, but God. Even maybe the teacher who taught you thought you would not become anything, but God. Your neighbors maybe never thought you would be anything, but God. Maybe your spouse kicked you out thinking you would be hopeless, but God. What I'm saying is God is that and maybe you were kicked out from a business premise, but God rescued you. Oh, I love this God who makes sure that you are kicked from a small promise so that you can believe God for a bigger one, so that you can be told something nasty, so that you can dream big. Cornerstone Academy came out from somebody who told me, Enda ukajenge enu. Amen. Na nikakuja nikajenga yetu. Amen. You know when it was meant for evil but you turn it around because God is in control. I don't know what people have told you. I don't know what you can tell God. This is what they have said. Lord, turn it for my good. Open a door for me. Cause me to prosper in the land of the living in the name of Jesus. So Joseph responds differently. You meant evil but God comes to my rescue. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So when to, to illustrate this, we can see what that means for this to be applied. How do you apply God's providence? How do you apply it in your life? And we will look at the life of Joseph. Then we can apply it in our lives. In the life of Joseph, just at the right moment, they throw him into the pit. If they throw him the day before, they would have killed him. But the day he came, he landed there at the right time. They throw him in the pit at the right time. The Medians show up at the right time. Potiphar shows up at the right time. And he's thrown in prison at the right time. He goes before Pharaoh at the right time. I'm praying that God can help you to see the provision of God. Are you there at the right time or do you go before him? May you go at the right time. May you ask the Lord, God, I need your timing because your timing is the best. You can finish to your neighbor. Why do I shanga shanga when they are slaughtering a cow? I want to be there to enjoy the meal. These stories of, oh, walipewa kila mutu ngiri 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 moja. Kwani nirikuwa papi? Niriwekewa? Hapana. Haiwe kagiwi wale ya waku epu. Are you getting the point? In our travels, to me enda kira mahali tumepewa gift. Now, somebody has always made a joke. Sureta hizo zikini ni wapereke wale wa akuja. Hakuna. Ni moja tu, hali isa lipewa nyingi za kufaperekea. Sasa hali isa ataperekea hao. Iyo ya mwisho. Kakamega. Wali toka mbio. Wale, we, actually, sisi tukigoja dege saa tatu. Wegini wali kuwa mefika Nairobi. Kwa sababu wali toka kule saa kumi. Na magali makubwa. Sasa sisi baka nikawa nikiomba. Buwana. Hallelujah. Siku nyingine. Nitakuwa na driver mbae ni kijana. Si upokea hiyo ya kijana. Uwe driver mwenye nguvu mbae. Naweza edesha gari. <laughs> at the right time. May the Lord cause you to be where you are. At the right time. Because at the right time. You will apply. It's applying the providence of God. At the right time. You are sucked at the right time. So you started a business at the right time. You find a job at the right time. You walked in your bosses at the right time. You know, I like this story. I like some of the testimonies that I've had during this trip that we have gone. One of the testimonies that I had was a brother 
who was not a member of House of Bread, who is a member of the Full Gospel Church. He entered into Mark's church and he was seated at the end. And Mark normally, unlike me, he walks into the aisles preaching. So as he preached, he got to where he was and he told you, seven days from today, your life will change. There is something that is going to happen to you that will change you. Monday, it not happened. But Tuesday when he went, he was caught by his boss. And the boss said, we have been discussing you. The boss says, I have heard a lot about you. The boss says, we have been wondering what to do to you. Then he pulls a letter from a drawer. He gives it to him. Now the question that I've, I've been asking, it simply meant, kuna watu wamekalia barua yako, enter at the right time. May they find you at the right time so that your letter is not kept. Somebody is sitting on it. Hata wakati mungina tunayenda kuchukua visa ya American Embassy, tunayenda at the wrong time. Can I tell you? At the wrong time. Mwashi goes at the right time. Haulizwi kitu. Hata ambiwe ni kijana. You know, all of us are asking, Mwashi ulipua visa na mnagani. Siku ulizwa kitu. Ni barua tu. Na kupewa. Na watu wengine, tunauliza kwa maswari forti. Karibu ulizwa, why are you tall? And why are you short? Why are you smiling? And you are not even smiling. You know, mbaka tunajua hii, hiyo story ni kukunyima wana kunyima. Lakini yule anapeagwa haulizi maswali nyingi. Kwanza wanachindwa kwa nini uleti yu nini wapige muhuri hapo. Mbaka wakulize how for how long do you want? May God cause me to be where he wants me at the right time. Not before him. Not after him. But at the right time. That's what provision is all it is. And then we can turn there for the question. Instead of saying can you Will you, will you trust God with all the details of your life? Will you, will you? I don't want to govern it. I want to release it to the Lord. Do you want, I want to release it to the Lord. Why? Because he makes no mistake. God makes no mistake. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, God makes no mistake. So I got this poem yesterday. This poem is written by someone who wrote it when his wife was being buried. When the preacher was preaching, this guy was writing something and the preacher is bothered. You know if I'm preaching it for your funeral, funeral of your spouse, and you're so busy doing something, I will wonder, are you okay? Or is that a way of mourning? You know, people mourn in different ways. You could be mourning by writing so many things, maybe writing letters to the person who has gone, maybe claiming some things, and so you could write many things. But this guy was writing a poem. Then the pastor asked him after the, 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 the service, what were you writing? He said, I was writing a poem that God makes no mistakes. God makes no mistake. So this is what he was saying, was writing when they were burying his wife. He says, my father's way may twist and turn. My heart may throb and ache. But in my soul, I'm glad to know he maketh no mistake. My cherished plans may go astray. My hopes may fade away. But still, I will trust my Lord to lead. For he knoweth, he does know the way. Though night be dark and it may seem that day will never break, I will pin my faith, my all in him. He maketh no mistake. There is so much now I can see. My eyesight is far too dim. There is so much now I cannot see. My eyesight far too dim. But come what may, I will simply trust and leave it all to him. For by and by the mist will lift and plain it all he will make. Though all, through all the way, though dark to me, he made no mistake because God does not make mistakes. Friends, providence of God simply says God does not make a mistake. I know when you have a problem with your spouse, you want to look for all the mistakes that you think God did. God didn't. He's the same one when you are calling each other honey sweet pie. He, he is the same. So, 
The person who has changed is not God, it's you. Maybe your focus is not seeing what you saw. Because God does not make a mistake. I want the choir to come, we sing a song. We'll sing a chorus that they sang a little while ago. That because of his faithfulness, because he's so faithful, he ni muaminifu, he had disappointed him. What was disappointed in what was dunia he? He had disappointed him. But he doesn't disappoint. He doesn't disappoint at all. He doesn't disappoint at all. And then I will ask the ministry team to do it to Marambiri because I think it is good. Because some of us could be feeling, oh, why me? Why now? Why this? Providence of God. It doesn't make a mistake. The minute that you become like Joseph, that you see God in every situation and you want God to be lifted and to be glorified, then it will be healing for you. You can get healing. But this I will open for about two minutes because my time is up. Healing is for a minute. And then you know if you have been disappointed, it is not God. Thank you. 